So this presentation is just a very short summary of the key elements to become a loving per, um, parent. The unit is based on making personal change and you could also just say it's about becoming a more loving individual or becoming a more loving parent as this is applied to parents and families. As I have mentioned previously, because this is based, because this unit is based on principles of God's truth, it can be applied to any person in any situation, from children to grandparents to adults to people without children as well. It's about becoming a more loving individual. The unit is directed though specifically at parents and family dynamics and this is a way to just examine a specific situation and also because I feel that if parents and families make personal change in harmony with God's way, there is a lot of potential for change on the planet and for the next generation of children to come through and um, be more in harmony with love than our generation has been. I feel there's a lot of potential, like positive potential for change in families. And I want to share with other families of the possibilities for a happier, more connected, uh, more loving family dynamic. So I've come up with some key things that you can in sort of summarize and keep in mind easily about, uh, well, they're just the key elements to become a loving parent. There's some qualities that can be developed by an individual, and these include um, love, truth, humility, faith, and aspiration or desire. And they are feelings that um, if you develop those qualities within yourself, they will be expressed from you as feelings. You can learn about those qualities by asking for a feeling from God about those feelings. So as you we were just talking about a relationship with God in the previous session, and that is one way that you can actually understand these qualities and become educated about them. Uh, these qualities stand you in good stead for your entire progression in your life, and also they will help you with being more loving in your family dynamic. They are qualities that you can refer back to and I often measure my, what I'm doing against these qualities. And I can look in, at situations in my life and reflect and say, oh, I lacked humility in this situation. Or, oh, I really didn't want to love in this situation. Or, oh, I was untruthful in that situation. Or, wow, I was really truthful about that. And look at the positive results that occurred from that. Or, I'm lacking faith. That's why I'm taking no action in a certain particular area of my life. And, or, I've got no desire. I don't want to do anything well, that's going to cause me to be doing nothing. So these are all qualities that help, uh, can help in our self-reflection process and can help us to grow and understand and come to know God more as well as ourselves and to create a more positive, loving family dynamic. There is a hierarchy of relationships also to develop and grow that are going to create a lot of um, love and happiness and also the most rapid way to learn about relationships and what is a loving relationship. So the relationship with God is the top priority. Relationship with people and love, and when I say relationship, I really mean love of God, you loving God and you loving people. That's gonna bring you a lot of joy and happiness if you sincerely do love them. The beauty of the gift of love is that when you give that gift, there's a lot of joy in giving it as well as the receiving of it. But I often feel that people want to be loved. They don't necessarily want to do the loving. But, and I would encourage you to experience it for yourself of what it feels like to truly have a feeling of love for another person with no expectation, no demand, no reciprocity, just that you want to love them. And so that is a, um, the first relationship to develop is love of God. The next one is love of people. Love of people includes as well, love of yourself and your soulmate, and then love of others, and love of others and children. And so the priority would be your uh, love of God and your relationship with God, your love of yourself and soulmate, and then others and, and children are included as others. And that's equal relationships, but you also will probably want to spend a lot of time with your soulmate and developing that soulmate relationship as well. Then there's also the, um, the love of the environment and I'm talking about the natural environment and that is another aspect like that is the physical support. The natural environment physically supports us to live and allows our physical bodies and our needs to be met 
And that is another area that often sadly is neglected. But by loving God and that hierarchy of relationships, you will, if you really learn about love, um, you will come to also um, love the environment as well. I feel like these, um, the more you develop your relationship with God, the more you learn about the qualities that I mentioned previously, and the more you start having those uh, qualities in your own heart, and the more desire you have to love and to be a loving individual, then the more impact, positive impact and loving impact you have on your environment. And it's like every area of your life is exposed of where you're being unloving. And that includes the earth and the earth's resources. But the most important is people. That's the beauty of all of these qualities and relationships. And I'm going to talk about principles in a minute, is that they all interlink. And that's the beauty of God's way is nothing is really separate. It's all combined. So in this mini session, we're talking about the key elements to become a loving parent. And it's going to be, we've talked about qualities to develop, primary relationships, we're going to talk about principles for growth. And also we're going to talk about tools that you can use in order to grow and develop and become a more loving individual and the method in order to do that. So we've covered the qualities, we've covered the primary relationships, um, the principles. Now I've spoken about principles in the last session. Principles are wonderful because obviously there's so many of God's laws and there's so much to know about each law and there's so much to understand about all of the even these qualities. But by applying principles, they can be applied to any situation under any circumstance for any person. So principles are a key thing to begin to understand. And when I say understand, you cannot understand a principle unless it is in your heart. So there are principles of, of all kinds of things. And I'm going to focus on um, four areas, and that is love, truth, faith, and humility. And a lot of principles can sort of be consolidated under those headings. And you can apply them in your everyday life when, you know, it's, it's like I kind of feel like for me, I sort of made up little words to remember. So like truth is always loving. Uh, look at myself first. And these are principles that you can apply. So uh, we've talked about no change can happen unless you desire personal change. You can only change yourself. Look at yourself first reminds me of those things. Look at myself first is like a principle. Well, look at me first. What in my soul is, is contributing to this situation? What in my soul has created this dynamic in the family? What in my soul? Because as a parent, you do create um, dynamics in the family. Like you do. You're responsible for that. And so you're also responsible for the correction of that. Um, humility, you know, um, that is part of looking at yourself first. Another thing is only real change is emotional soul-based change. That's a principle and I, would go, I go back to that all the time. I'm like, have I emotionally changed on this issue? Have I made soul-based change? No, nope. okay, I haven't changed. You know, all right, I'm not humble. I need to, to work on that area. I need to, to do that better. A principle of love is never compromise on love. Never compromise on love. And another one for truth, never compromise on truth. Never compromise love and truth. Every time you compromise love and truth, you're going to create unhappiness for yourself and or others and or both. So in the, in the long term, so never compromise on what is loving and truthful. Another principle is, um, that I put under humility is feel how you really feel. Connect your, so, you know, and that's something that I just reminds us, feel how you really feel. What do I really feel in this situation? And as I said, began as an intellectual thing. Now it's more automatic. It's like, oh, I feel this, I feel that. And it's, it's a lot easier. Like anything that you develop or you create or you grow, it's a... Like it, um, it takes time, and over time, you it becomes more automatic than when you first begin. And keep that in mind when you're experimenting with this unit. You're not just going to be all changed and loving tomorrow. And I really suggest I was talking to some people that I met yesterday, and just talking to them about how they want to sort of be loving, but it's a facade of love because they don't feel loving yet. They're actually acting. They've got some very unloving feelings actually in their family and the dynamic that's happening and towards the child who their, um, their child and the fact that they are not being honest about that and they're trying to be loving and act in a loving manner is actually like a hypocrisy and is actually very an unloving thing to do because their feelings and thoughts are not matching up. And when your feelings and thoughts and, and what you say is not matching up, 
for a child, they're feeling what you feel. And so when your words don't match up, you're teaching them basically to lie. And you're teaching them as well that, you know, that, that your parents being untruthful. And that's going to, they're going to have some feelings about that in future. So always be truthful with what you feel. Feel what you really feel right now. So yeah, develop these qualities and the relationships, the key relationships. And then there's principles. And there's so many principles that go under these. I'm just mentioning that there are principles that I've mentioned a few of these principles. And if you apply the principles, then that will help in every single area of your life. Then there's some tools that you can use. I'm only mentioning the ones that are directly related to God, but there are some other tools that you can learn um, use as well. The ones related to directly with a relationship with God and that I find the most powerful and the most helpful are prayer, which is a soul-based longing or desire for something. And anytime you have a pure prayer, God answers a pure prayer. Um, if it's in harmony with love and truth and everyone will be answered and so there's a lot of power in prayer and a prayer is it's not sitting down and saying some words or reciting some you know poetic language it's about the feeling you have and that's your true and I, I found that quite helpful to realize my true prayer is what I truly feel so if I feel this feeling towards God for instance of like God I really want to know the truth about dot 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 whatever fill in the gap what do you want to know the truth about I will get an answer if I have a sincere desire to know that. And God will answer that honestly immediately via feelings. But if I, um, at the beginning, I was pretty blocked to my feelings. So the law of attraction would bring me events to highlight to me, oh, this is, this is the answer to your prayer. And even that was hard at the beginning because I didn't, I'd have these prayers and then forget that I'd had them. And then all this stuff would happen in my life. And I'd be like, oh, I wonder what that's all about, you know, and it took some um, feedback from my friends, Jesus and Mary, and they would like say, yeah, but didn't you notice, like, you've just told, like, I'd tell them the story, and they'd be like, oh, yeah, but you told us that you prayed for it, so that's the law of attraction showing you and giving you the answer. So I, you know, I encourage you to observe the law of attraction and God's laws and what it's trying to tell you, particularly if you've had a prayer about something, but just in general, because I kind of feel like sometimes we're unconsciously praying the desires that are going out of us, sometimes you're not thinking about them. And that was another thing that I found is that so many things that I thought really are meaningless. It's only what I feel that's important because what I feel is driving my actions, my desires, what I do, what I don't do, how I interact with a person, how I don't interact with a person, or if I avoid a person, my feelings drive everything. And so it's because the more sensitive you become to your feelings, the better it is for your life, but also the more you recognize, you know, your prayers, but you can make your prayers conscious. And that is a tool that I find very useful and is worth developing and experimenting with. Another tool that God has um, given us provision for is the conscience. Um, I call that the direct truth channel. And it's a way that you can get direct truthful answers from God about what is moral and immoral, what is right and wrong, loving and unloving. And that is something that God wants to answer every one of your questions. The only reason that you won't get an answer is due to an emotional block or uh, resistance within yourself. If you work through those things, you will get answers. And the conscience is something that anybody can use. You can sensitize, be sensitive to the conscience or you can desensitize the conscience. Often we've desensitized to the conscience because we don't like what God is doing and we want to continue to do the immoral thing or the thing that God's in disagreement with, so we ignore the conscience. I again encourage you to sensitize to the conscience and actually become more and more and more and more sensitive so that it's, you notice every time that God is, is speaking with you. And uh, when I say that, giving you, a, um, giving you a feeling of what is right and wrong. And then there's a relationship with God, which is a direct communication with God, which is the fastest, most rapid, bestest way of actually communicating and, and getting an education and love. And so it is definitely a tool that is worth exploring and developing. So you have the three tools, um, prayer, conscience, relationship with God. As I said, there are more, but those are the ones that I wanna focus on in order to become a more loving individual slash parent slash person. Then there's a method that you can experiment with right now. So this is a practical application of what we've just talked about in this diagram. So now you can practically apply these things that we've just spoken about. And there's an experiment you can do of looking and measuring at um, where is your humility, truth, and love at. Now, in order to be more humble, you need to have faith and humility first. 
you have whatever you have faith in is what you're going to do or what you're not going to do. So if you don't have faith in, in that being soft to your emotions and feeling whatever you feel is good for you and is going to have a positive impact in your life and is going to help make soul-based change, you won't do it. So look at where your faith is right now and then grow and, and set some time and effort and energy and your intention in order to grow your faith in humility which will involve looking at your false beliefs about it and your flawed definitions of love and why you don't want to be humble. Now, once you have some faith in humility, you'll have a tendency to be more humble. Once you're more humble, then you will be open, like that opens you to more truth. Once, or to truth directly from God, you can then receive God's um, feelings about how God feels about any subject. And then once you've got more truth, it opens you up to love. You cannot have love without truth. They go together. And that's going to be something to reflect upon. There are so many people who I meet who feel that truth is a bad thing. They want to lie. They admit truth. They feel truth hurts. They feel love hurts. And they feel that uh, it's like bad for them or it's going to be painful. All of that is lies. Love and truth never hurt. They only bring good things. They alleviate fear. They're like the anect, anect, antidote to fear. They are, um, and truth is a way to actually make informed decisions about your life rather than just cluelessly going around uh, seeing things. Truth is the way to find out about yourself. Like you, you must be truthful in order to know who you are and what your soul is like and what your personality and nature is like. And um, you need truth in order to discover the pain of your past in order to release that and you need truth in order to accept God's love. You need to be able to be open to accepting God's truth on a matter so that you can change and your belief systems can change and you can actually also have a, the feeling of what is truthful from God's perspective. And when you do have that, then there's a lot of good things that happen in your life. So all of those beliefs and false beliefs you have about any one of these qualities um, is worth looking at. The, when I'm talking about this truth hurts or when people say love hurts, love never hurts and truth never hurts. I said, made that statement. And what I find is that it's sometimes what the, the pain of your past or the false belief that you have that is exposed by love and truth, and there might be pain in that and that might be hurt, but we need to stop attributing that pain to truth and love itself. And if you do have those feelings, which you might, and that's where you're at, you need to go, you can go through that process that we've been talking about to make soul-based personal change, which is taking a snapshot, which is like, okay, this is how I feel right now. Oh, this is what's happening in my life right now. You can self-reflect on it. Wow, okay, every time truth is, is happening, I feel like it's painful and it hurts. Why is that? Seek that. Then we talked about cause and effect. All right, what is the cause of me believing and feeling that truth hurts? And you can go through that process. Again, then if you have developing a relationship with God, you can ask for God's um, feelings directly and you can do that right now and just say, God, how do you feel about truth? Do you really feel like truth is hurtful? And again, it will, you need to be humble in order to receive that answer, but that is something that you can experiment with. So this method or this exp um, experiment that you can do is faith and humility, then b growing your humility, becoming a more humble person, um, growing your desire for God's truth and also desire to love and to be more loving. So this, we've talked about um, qualities to develop, primary relationships and the hierarchy of relationships that will help you grow the fastest in order to become a more loving person. We've talked about um, principles and how print, applying principles is a very rapid way to begin to become a more loving person and to also find out about love and to remind yourself of what to do in any given situation rather than having to do a lot of intellectual thought about it. What, um, when I say that you won't have to think about it once those principles are in your heart or you've, you've, um, or they've, they're in your soul. Then I've talked about tools being prayer, the conscience and your relationship with God and those are excellent tools to, to have in order to gain an education in love and to become a more loving person. And then we just did a little method or experiment that you can trial right now about putting all of this into action in your life. So those are the key elements to becoming a loving person or the key elements to becoming a loving parent in this situation as we're relating this unit 
to parenting and families. See you in the next session.